I've been seeing this guy so long. Not only do I hate my mother, now I hate his mother. It's <laughs> a good joke. All right, here we go. Here we go. Are you ready? This guy is so unusual. This guy is so unusual and hysterical. Let's welcome to the stage a very funny Lou Hinkle. Lou Hinkle. Oh, fuck. Well, I just want to get off, start out by apologizing like to all the pussies in the audience. Like if what comes and spews out of my mouth is like nastier than like what's at the bottom of a pair of your period panties. But like straight up, like I can't fucking help it because like this fucking bitch got me like fucking madder than like, you know, John Travolta getting a woman masseuse and shit. Because like, I got this, like, hippie girl going around trying to, like, smear my name, like, fucking, you know, and sour my name like her fucking vegan vagina and shit. Like, you know, straight up, like, I'll admit, I got a weakness for crazy bitches, you know, and it, they could make me, like, look as silly as, like, a Catholic priest at a Boy Scout tickle fight. But, like, this, this bitch was straight up acting like I was sweating her like a fucking Somali at abortion clinic and shit like that. And it was fucking nothing like that. Like, you know, straight up. Like, because, like, I know if our two types of crazies, like, ever fucking mixed, it would, like, co-modulate, like, you know, like, two dicks and, like, end up like Greg Luganus and shit and just fucking blow up in my face and die in AIDS. You know, but it, it is what it is. So that's, but, like, that's the thing. So, like, you know, fuck it, you know. Because that's what, the bitch has me all fucked up and discombobulated because it was like, you know, I was trying to fucking like rape her and do all of this crazy shit, like, and all of this. And it's like, yeah, fuck that, you know? Like, uh, I may have just been thinking with my six inch Philly cheesesteak, you know? I was just misinformed and mal malnourished, you know? That, that's all that shit was. <laughs> this bitch was acting like she was on the same pedestal as like John Bit. John Benet Ramsey and shit. Like, like I was dressing up as an IRS agent and putting love letters on her fucking door and shit like that. Like, it's like, straight up, come on. Like, you know, if I wanted to go through the trouble, like, of dipping my Lou Hancock in, like, her census bureau to audit a fucking couple, couple squirts out, you know, I'd be a little bit fucking smarter than to fucking dress up as an IRS agent. I just just dress up as the fucking planner's peanut guy, cause you know I know I know her pussy plantation has seen more nuts than Frederick Douglass, you know. But fuck it, you know, you know what I'm saying. So it, it's just it, it's just been like a pretty desperate time and shit like that with me, cause like my internet and fucking cable got shut off as well. So like my dick's like literally as desperate as Jerry Sandusky's kids. Like, thank God fucking Miley Cyrus was on the Ellen DeGeneres show yesterday because, like, the only thing I've been splitting my dick to is what comes through my fucking bunny ears. And, like, it, it's, it's, like, not as easy as it used to be, like, to jerk off, like, you know, like it's 1996 and you're home, home school from school sick and shit, you know? Like, the pickings are slim. I'm jerking off the fucking nip slips on the people's court and fucking Judge Judy right now. Yeah, you know? because like, dude, it, it like used to be as easy as fucking Plinko back in the day, or like as easy as fucking Bob Orville Redenbach making Gladys's Puerto Rican pussy pop after like an episode of Matlock and shit like that. Cause like the only thing I I used to need back in the day was like a little just Regis and Kelly, and I was fucking hocking up loogies in a fucking napkin in no time, because you know. Ke Kelly was just like such a cock tease and all, all over them old fucking balls, you know? But like, you, you just can't do that shit now that she's like teamed up with Big Mike and shit, you know? And it's like, not that I'm fucking racist or anything like that. It's just, you know, black dudes got some big ass motherfucking dicks. And like if Strahan's fucking 17 inch salami gotten like the Kelly's fucking gourmet ham sandwich, he fucking blow them vaginal walls up and have them fucking looking like a grenade went off in Carnegie Deli, you know? He'd fucking destroy that shit. If I was to follow up that encore, it would be like just throwing down a fucking hot dog down a hallway. I can't compete with that shit. But that's it for me. Peace, bitches.
You guys know how some people like think about what they're gonna say before they say it? And then like some people don't? <laughs> Another hand for uh, Lou Hinkle, ladies and gentlemen. But seriously, he will rape you. All right, be careful. I'm just uh, be careful. <laughs> no, we like him here. I think um, uh, this next comic coming to the stage is a good friend of mine. We just pounded like six beers at my apartment before we got here. Dylan Fisher, ladies and gentlemen. Yo, I got a bone to pick with the last guy who came up here. Where the fuck is Lou? Yo, that's my fucking thing. You think you're the only one with a harpoon dick? I'm sorry. He's not even in the fucking room. <laughs> Guys, let's make some noise. It's Wednesday! <laughs> that was all just to piss off Lou, and he wasn't even in the room. But it's on his DVD right now recording, so <laughs> I'll get him later. Uh, so I have, uh, I have some uh, sad news. I broke up with uh, my girlfriend on Monday. Aww. Aww. I know, but we were together for a long while, and I think a month and a half is a, is a long time to spend with just one person. It was kind of getting to me. Uh, we did have some fun, though. We didn't have sex for the first two weeks that we were dating. I've never done that with a girl, ever. It was amazing. And uh, so I thought, Cal I figured Calloway was coming over here to tell me something. <laughs> like, dude, you got one minute. <laughs> Uh, but yes, yeah, so we didn't have sex for the first two weeks, which was cool. So it was a lot of heavy makeout and dry humping sessions on my futon, folded up, guaranteed nothing's gonna happen. And uh, so after one of these sessions, she like stopped and she was like, I have to go to class soon, but I feel bad I keep leaving you like this. Is there anything I can do for you? And I was like, oh, okay. I will take a hand job. And while you're offering stuff for me, for you to do to me, I'm, I'm gonna go with the hand job. And she was like, okay. So I took off my pants, starts giving me just a hand job. I haven't had just a hand job since I was like 16 years old. <laughs> I was like going out of my mind. It was great. Halfway through it, I said, hey, do you want me to let you know when I'm about to come? And she was like, well, yeah, that'd be nice. Then I can grab a towel and be prepared. I'm like, okay. Then she goes right back into the hand job. I go right back into being 16 years old. Totally forget <laughs> to give her the heads up. And I just end up having things come all over the two of us. It's, it was semen. That's what the things was. But whatever, we laugh about it and giggle and yada, 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 whatever. Nobody cares. It's fine. It was a good hand job. Then, uh, then like a week later, uh, we start having sex, and after our first round of passionate, pent-up sex, she starts giving me another hand job, And I'm like, oh my god, this is so great. This is fantastic. But I remember, I'm like, Dylan, you know what happened last time. Make sure you give her the heads up. So it gets to like the minute mark, when you start to get the tingly feeling in your toes and it's crawling up your body. And so I look at her and I say, I'm gonna come soon, and she goes, nice. <laughs> And I stopped, I was like, what? She was like, what's wrong? I was like, you just became one of my buddies on the football team all of a sudden. I thought you were gonna throw your hand up for a high five and be like, nice bro, we're doing this. We got this all over me, let's go. Oh God. But yeah, uh, a month and a half I was with this girl, you know, a comedian who's afraid of commitment. I'm starting new territory here. But you know, I mean, romance is fun. Like if, uh, romance at first, it's great. It's like your own. It's like you're in your own romantic comedy. You get that first date. You're so excited and you're so nervous. You show up to the restaurant. You have a great time. You make her laugh. She she makes you laugh. You're like, oh, it doesn't get any better than this. Then you walk her back to the train. You have an awkward goodbye that makes you think for the rest of the night and all the next day. Was that a date? Was it not? What's <laughs> what's going on? And you call her a couple days later, ask her out again, you get the second date. Yes, man, you're always overthinking stuff. You got this, you got this. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go on the second date. It's even better than the first. You go out to dinner, you go for a nice long walk, you get a couple ice cream cones, you're sharing ice cream between cones sharing germs so you already know she's comfortable with everything you have going on up here it's totally fine 
And then you start the long walk back to the subway. You're struggling to carry on the conversation because you have this ping pong match going on in your head. Should I kiss her? Should I not? You get to the subway steps. She looks at you. She says, hey, I had a really great time tonight. And I say, hey, I had a really great time too. You go in for the kiss. She kisses you back. Oh my God. You don't even listen to your iPod on the subway ride home. <laughs> Because no music can match the music that's going on inside your heart right now. <laughs> Am I all out of time? Yeah. You are. Fuck. <laughs> I hate relationships. She's a bitch. You guys have been great. Enjoy your night. I, I hope you have another date, so at least you'll have somebody to bring next week when you come here. Uh, hi, we don't have a lot of women in this room. We have only three women, okay? They sit in a circle. Gay, Amanda, and a brand new comic who I saw her tape. She is awesome. Let's hear her for you. You ready, Ashley? Ashley Gavin. I have to write. Gladys is wonderful, right? This is my first time here, you guys. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize that it was also a retirement home. That is so nice. Really, it was very thoughtful. Um, so how?